Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Bilal from South London. I'm a new Muslim of seven years. I'm here to give you a brief story about how I became Muslim. I would first like to start off with letting you know how my life was before Islam. Before Islam, I never had any limits. I used to live life as I liked and nafsi nafsi. I would follow my own desires and I'd live a life how I, as I liked. I'd done anything I pleased and I didn't know the difference between right and wrong. So, as a youngster, I've always believed in one God. My mother's always told me that there's one God and this God should be worshipped. I followed my mum in this, in this statement that she told me and I've always believed in this God and I've turned to this God, prayed to this God and tried to communicate with this God. What ended up happening was I ended up seeking a way of life, trying to seek a way, a path, find the right way. So I would turn to this God and ask this God for help and ask this God for guidance and support and anything that I needed within life. After time, I grew up and I ended up playing football semi-professionally. I played as a semi-professional footballer, uh, going on to being a professional football player. I never quite made it professionally, but I travelled, done a little bit of travelling and saw different ways of life. At school, I had a friend, he was a Moroccan. He used to tell me about Islam. He wasn't really practising his religion, but we were very close friends. And he used to tell me about Islam every now and then. He used to tell me about the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He used to tell me about Quranic ayahs. And he used to tell me about the way in which the Muslims would live their lives. At first, I was a bit hesitant. I never used to take to, to everything he used to tell me. But after time, I realised that what he was saying uh, had some form of truth to, towards it. At this time, I was looking at many different religions. I was looking into Christianity and did the different forms of Christianity that they have. I never really looked into Judaism, Buddhism and so on and, like, and of the likes. So basically, he would tell me and we would, you know, my close friend, he would tell me and give me advice. And we would talk about Islam. And I always believed that Islam was a religion that they worshipped many gods. I didn't understand about Islam. I didn't know anything about Islam, which is quite strange because there was a lot of Muslims in my school. And a lot of Muslims were around me, but I couldn't tell the difference between a Muslim, a Hindu, a Sikh, because I believed that they were all the same. I believed that they all worshipped different gods and many different gods. And I believed it was a religion only for Arabs and Asians and of the likes. I didn't believe that Islam was a religion that was open for everyone. So after time, you know, he would give me hadith and one in particular conversation that we had was about the covering of women. The covering of women and I asked him, why is it that your women cover like this? He informed me and told me that the women, they cover, why? Because women are important to us in Islam. Our wives, our sisters, our daughters. He gave me an example, he said, look, if you have something important in Islam, you hide it. Just like if you have money. You don't let everyone know the income that you make. You don't let everyone know the wealth that, that you're making. You don't show people the money that you have. You hide it away. You put it into, into a safe and you lock it up. You keep it away from the people. So he explained to me that the women are more important than money. So he said, this is the reason why we cover them. We don't want our women to be seen by everyone and to be looked upon and so on and so forth. So I could understand. He related to me in this way and many different conversations that we had regarding Islam and then one of the main things that he told me was, which was a surprise to me, he told me about Muslims, he said that they submit to God and I said okay this is what all the religions do and he said, I said so what is special about Islam? He said to me that Muslims we submit, we're the only religion of today that submit to one God alone. We're the only religion that worship only one God. And I, did, I looked into Christianity and one of the concepts that I couldn't agree with was the Trinity. Was the, the worshipping of the three gods. So when he told me that this is the case with Islam, automatically my heart, it sunk. And it drew me towards Islam. I ended, after this point, after he, cause I, because I was always looking, I've always been a person that believes in one God. Of no religion, but of one God. Okay? And I saw this as a door opening for me. So I inquired more. I looked into Islam further. The further I went, the realer I saw that Islam was. You know, 
I dug deeper and I could, the, the further I was digging, I was finding every shovel, that, every dig that I went into, it was finding, uncovering more information that I truly believed was the truth. And what happened, he told me that we only worship one God and that Muhammad is the last and final messenger. I said to him, why is it that Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Why? Why wasn't Jesus or Moses the last messenger? He said to me that basically explained that of the last major religions, Judaism, that God sent down Moses to guide the people aright and to tell them about worshipping him alone and to, to grant them the Ten Commandments. And the people at that time, they were following the right way. And what happened was, after time when Moses went, they went astray. So God sent down Jesus. Jesus to guide the people aright. And the word of Jesus was correct at this time. And it's upon the people now to follow the Jesus. And what happened after when Jesus went, the people, they went astray again. And it was upon, while Jesus was alive, it was upon the, the Jews to follow, to follow who? Jesus. So now, some of them followed Jesus and some of them, they stayed as a Jew. Okay, and then after Jesus went, God sent down the last messenger. And I said, okay, so why was he the last messenger? He said that he was the last messenger because it's a seal of the, the faith of worshipping one God. It's a seal. And he explained to me that anyone can come after the prophets and say that they're, they're now, they're a prophet. So it's to basically to, to let the people know that this is the seal until the last day of judgment. So basically he explained to me that Islam is a confirmation of Christianity. Christianity was a confirmation of Judaism. Okay, and he told me that the religion of today that the Jews and the Christians to follow is the religion of Islam. He said it's something new. It's only 1,430 odd years old. He also explained to me about the Quran. He said the Quran hasn't been changed. One of the reasons what swayed me away from Christianity was that I didn't know where to look. I looked here and I saw differences within each. I picked up every Bible I picked up was different. So I, I got very confused. Everyone that I asked questions to, they, they brought a different question forward. So it was very confusing for me to understand the religion of Christianity. Okay? And he explained to me that Islam is a way of life. The five daily prayers, the Hajj, the Psalm, the Zakat, and likewise. So I started to realize that Islam was the truth. But deep down I had a, a thought in my head, how can I be Muslim? How? How am I? living this lifestyle that I live after with all the, f the things that I've done how am I going to change myself and accept being a Muslim it's too much the fasting it's too much giving the money it's too much the prayer and all that comes with Islam I, I couldn't appreciate what it was I said to myself for me yes I believe I started to believe that Islam was the truth but it took me time to realize so I started to believe that Islam was the truth but I, it was too hard for me to take into to concept the five daily prayers, the Hajj and what comes along with Islam. So I ended up agreeing with Islam but yet not being able to make that step to Islam. My friend, he invited me around his house many times and I got to see how his family and how the Muslims, how they live at home. He would invite me around for food, we would eat together and then Ramadan came around. Ramadan came and we would sit down and he would invite me around for food. After Ramadan, his family, they invited me to visit their home in Morocco. Before I went to Morocco, I accepted the invitation, but before I went to Morocco, a surprise happened to me. All of a sudden, my brother, he became Muslim, my elder brother. Me and my elder brother were very close. He became Muslim and I was surprised. I was, why is it that you became Muslim? I used to ask him questions. Why? And at the time, a lot of people from South London uh, became Muslim. A lot of people are still becoming Muslim, especially from the youth. So a lot of people from South London became Muslim, especially from the, the youth of South London. What ended up happening was, me and my brother, like I said, we were close, but we went, we, after a few months, we ended up going, separating. We wasn't as close as we used to be. My brother now wanted to lead a life of Islam. He wanted to do good. He wanted to eat halal. He stopped eating pork. He changed his company. 
and I saw a big change in the way that my brother, he lived his life. And, you know, this made a big impact on me. He also was invited to Morocco. So we went to Morocco, me, my brother and my Moroccan friends. We done a road trip. We stopped off in a few places on the way. We ended up getting to Morocco and subhanAllah, my first time in a Muslim land. I saw how the Muslims, the Moroccans, how they live their lives. And you would see poor people eating on the street. Yet, I would have money in my pocket and they would offer me to come and sit down with them. Ta'al, come eat with me, come eat with me. And I couldn't understand this. Why would you tell me to come eat with you when you're poor and you don't have any money? You know, this, this hit me when I heard the Adan for the, the call for prayer. I used to, I was very inquisitive. I used to ask questions about the way that the people are. Why do they do this? I, I went to slaughter my first chicken. I didn't understand about it, but I still went and done it. I lived, you know, in Morocco for a, a short period of time. But I saw how the Muslims were and, and the, the etiquettes and the kindness that they have. So I saw how the Muslims lived. And I saw the characteristics of the Muslims in the Muslim land. You know, this is a big eye opener. Not only for Islam, but for life experiences. It opened my eyes to a lot of things. I used to think I lived in hardship. And I realized after this, this trip, that no, I wasn't actually in hardship. I didn't live a life of, I lived a life of ease. Living in London, you know. So what happened one night in Morocco, we went to a wedding. And Moroccan weddings are very extravagant. We ended up getting home around about three o'clock in the morning. We arrived back to my friend's house. We got to the house and we realized that the doors were all locked. So we asked ourselves, how are we going to enter the house without anyone waking up? My Moroccan friend, Saeed, he was hesitant to knock the door. So we said, what should we do? We, asked, we sat down, we spoke, and all of a sudden we heard the adhan for the call for Fajr, for the, the call for Fajr prayer. My brother's Muslim, I was the only non-Muslim at the time. They said that we want to go to the masjid to pray. I said, well, first I contemplated, and then I said, okay, I will come, khalas, let me come with you guys. So I went to the mosque for the first time. This is my first time to go into the mosque. I went to the mosque. He showed me how to do it, make wudu. I said, I'll follow. I'll, he told me to follow his actions in the prayer. So we started to pray. And then I heard everyone say, Amin, which was such a big surprise to me. After the, the prayer had finished, we, I got up and we all got up to leave. And we saw my friend's dad in the masjid. I've never seen such a smile on his face, seeing all of his sons. His son's friends in the Masjid for Fajr, he couldn't believe his eyes. So Morocco was definitely an experience for me. I ended up going back to London. And now I ended up in the company of, of a lot of Muslims. At the time I wasn't Muslim. So I would ask a lot more questions, but it was still, there was still something holding me back. And to this day, I, I believe that it was Shaitan whispering at me, telling me, you know, don't take the step. Don't take leap forward to to actually declaring the Shahada and becoming Muslim. This time period was for some time. I ended up going to the mosque and praying in the mosque, praying my salah in the masjid. But at the time, at this time, I still wasn't Muslim. There was a Ramadan that came around. I ended up fasting the whole month of Ramadan. And yet the benefit that I received afterwards, you know, I felt a lot better after the Ramadan, but I still, I said to myself, it was still taking me, I didn't have the strength to take in my shahada. What, what ended up happening was, I was in the masjid one day and I finished praying my salah. Okay, I finished praying and, and I sat down in the corner of the masjid and one of my old school friends, he came to me and he said, you're Muslim, mashallah, mashallah. Wow, he was surprised and I said to him, I, I didn't want to let him down, but I did. I said to him, you know, that I'm, I'm not Muslim, I'm not Muslim. He said, why are you in the mosque? Why did you just pray with us? He couldn't understand. So I explained to him, you know, you know, I like to pray, I like to, to worship, but, you know, Islam is a, is a bit too hard for me. So he asked me, why? Why is it that you're in the mosque? You're praying, you're fasting, you're with the Muslims, but yet you're still not Muslim. I didn't know the answer to this question. I didn't know the answer. So the only thing that I could think of was the enormous gap that I would, the enormous, enormous leap that I would take to become a Muslim, the life change. And I, I was scared of this and I never, this is one of the reasons, this is why I explained to him. So he was quite blunt with me. He explained to me, you're worshipping Allah, you're worshipping one God. 
yet you don't want to follow the, the sunnah of the Prophet He said, you're doing all this fasting, all this praying, and all these good things that you, you are doing, but yet you are not getting no reward for it. He said, you're not Muslim, you're not getting reward. You're, the reward that you're not encompassing reward. So I could understand, I believed what he was telling me. He said to me, look, he broke it down for me. He said, if you leave this masjid now, if you leave the masjid, okay, and you die, yeah, and we can die at any time. This is something that is, you know, it's ma'roof, it's known. We can die at any time. And I understood this at the time. He said, if you leave the masjid, what will happen is, if you die a non-Muslim, you will not have the chance to go to paradise. You won't have the chance to go in paradise. And this really took me back. He then went on to explain that if I was to take my shahada now, and I was to leave this masjid, and something happened to me, anything was to happen, I was to pass away. He said, more, the likelihood that you would be going to paradise, because as you take your shahada, you become uh, free of sin. And the angels start writing your good deeds down and your bad deeds. So there and then, I declared my shahada. I ended up taking my shahada in Croydon Masjid. The brothers there, they hugged me, they greeted me. And this is another reason why I became Muslim, because of the brotherhood in Islam. The way that the brothers are towards each other. You don't need to be shy of the brothers that you're around. You can be yourself. You don't need to put up a front. You live, I treat the Muslim brothers just like I would treat my, my blood brother. And they treat me the same. So this type of way that they, they greeted me, the way that they greeted me and they took me in, it was very, very pleasing to me. So I became Muslim. At first, it was quite hard for me. I, I found it difficult with the prayers and the, and the fasting. I ended up changing my life, changing my life for the better. I ended, I, what happened with me, first of all, I, never, I wasn't praying all my salah first. After time, I ended up praying now and then. After a little bit more time, I ended up praying all of my salah, but at night time. I would pray all of my salah at night. And then after time, as knowledge came to me, I realized that this wasn't correct. And I ended up praying my salah on time and eating halal meat. But slowly, slowly, I ended up implementing this into my life. My friends, they changed. You know, my, they, they didn't understand where and what I was up to. However, I tried to invite people, my close friends, to Islam. Some of them accepted, some of them to this day are not Muslim. Inshallah, Allah guides them. And after time, what happened, I started to realize what life is about. So what happened now, I just started making changes in my life. And I started to realize what was right and what was wrong. Before, I never had no concept of the halal and the haram. I never understood what to do and, and how to live life. Now that I'm Muslim, I have a, a clear understanding of the way to live my life and what is good and what is wrong. Not to say that I'm perfect, I still fall into sin and error, yet I know that I, I'm sinning and I know that I can make tawbah for my sins and I, can, and I can run to what is good. How did it feel? How did it feel for me? For me, before I was Islam, I can only explain to you like this. Imagine yourself in a room, a dark room, a room where there is no light, no doors. You're walking around lost. You have weight on your shoulders and this weight is getting heavier and heavier and you're trying to find your way out. This is how I was before I was Muslim and becoming Muslim. All of a sudden Allah, he lets a light come into this room. So now you know where the exit is to this room and you run towards this light. The weight is falling off of your shoulders and you're slowly getting towards the light. Okay, and Allah guides you out of the dark into the light. This is the way that I can explain uh, how it felt for me. With regards to my family and them and the way that they reacted towards me becoming Muslim. My mother, she's not Muslim. Inshallah, Allah guides her to Islam. My mother's a beautiful woman and she's raised all of us and Allah guide her. She's very supportive of me. At first, she was like, what is this? She believed it was only a phase for me. She believed I was only going to be doing this for maybe a few weeks, a few months. Me and my brother, you know, we became close again. We started to pray together. He would, he, his knowledge uh, succeeded mine. So he would give me advice in certain areas and we would pray together and, and so on and so forth. My mother, she saw a change in both of us. She knew it was for the better, but at the same time, as she believes in one God, we spoke to her about Islam daily. 
But we realized that we were putting too much pressure on my mother. So we said, Khalas, we will talk to her every now and then and let her see in our actions and the way that we, we are now and the way that we've changed our lives and bring our families and, you know, and our friends and introduce my mother to new people. My younger sister, she, after maybe a year of me becoming Muslim, Wallah, SubhanAllah, what happened to me one day, I came back from work. My sister, she walked through the door wearing a hijab. And I burst, I nearly burst into tears. I said, what is this? She said, I'm Muslim now, SubhanAllah. And at this time, I rushed and gave her a hug. My brother was happy. My mum, she was a bit optimistic at the time. She was happy for us, you know. Now she's happily married with kids and we're all happily, happy living life, mashallah. Inshallah, I have one more sister. She's still not Muslim. She's very close to becoming Muslim. And I pray and I, that my mother and my, my sister, they become Muslim, inshallah. And my brief message to the Muslims that are listening is that, you know, we're here. Allah has guided us to Islam, be it a revert to Islam or be it born and raised as a Muslim. We have to live life and try and strive to be good Muslims, to remember Allah much on our tongues and in every action that we do. Allah has given us a way of life to live. This is not just with the Salah and with the Salam. This is with everything that we do. Every single action that we do in life, be it standing, sitting or lying down, going to the toilet, how to deal with people, business. You know, Allah has given it to us. Try to stick to this and try to stick to the way that Allah has given us. Try to gain knowledge, uh, realizing what is right and what is wrong. And we're not perfect. Like I said before, we fall into sin and we fall into error. However, we have to know what is right and what is wrong. And we have to seek Tawbah for what is wrong. And we have to increase in what we, we're doing that is right. And keep good company. This is very important as a Muslim. The company that you keep is essential. You will follow the company that, that you keep. We're currently in Saudi Arabia, Arafat. Uh, as you can see, I'm in Ihram performing the Hajj. Today is uh, Yawm al-Arafat, the day of Arafat. And this day Allah will, uh, inshallah, answer the du'as of the Muslims. So I will turn to Allah and I will ask Allah that He unites us as Muslims. He brings good to us. He guides us the straight way and He grants us Jannah. Amen. Jazakallah khair for everyone that is listening. Inshallah, Allah grant you all good, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.